his son here, verse 14. Sitting on you, I'm gonna find out the stuff gonna start to go smoothly and quickly. Yes, sir. Amen. Chapter 4, starting at verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and they went out of fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, gave it again to the minister, Sat down, and all the eyes of, of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, If not this Joseph's son, and he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proper position, Heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when the great famine was throughout all the land, but unto none of them was a lie sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, save Naaman, Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Rose up, thrust them out of the city, led him unto the brow of the hill whereon the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he passing through the midst of them, went his way, came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, taught them on the Sabbath days, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Jesus. Father, speak unto us, your people, in the wonderful, mighty name of your son, Jesus, that your saints be edified and strengthened, we may gain knowledge and understanding of your word and your way, and that sinners would come yield themselves to Jesus their Redeemer and Savior, that they may be reconciled back unto you in Christ. In his powerful name we ask it all. Amen. You may be seated. Today is the day we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And it's only fitting that we hit this scripture where Jesus had first been baptized and, and led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And at that time, he did not have anything to eat. And, uh, and of course, the enemy loves to bring us things 
in the places where we empty and home. Amen. Because if you were not hungry, you would not want it. If you full already, you don't have space for nothing else to eat. Amen. Any of y'all ever been full and tried to eat something? Amen. If you already full, what's going to happen is it's going to come up because there's no more room. Amen. Amen. But what the enemy did not know is that Jesus was already full of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. And so uh, he he kept coming at Jesus, hitting him with all these different temptations and texts. And you know, told him if you worship me, I you know I'll give you access to all the kingdoms of the world because they've been given unto me. And uh, he he thought he could give the Lord what already belonged to him. So the Bible said, "The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and all that dwell therein." People are thinking, "How are you going to try to give me what's already mine?" And uh, so he kept going back and forth with the enemy and finally, you know, like the Bible says, if you oppose the enemy, steadfast in the faith, the Bible says that he'll be. Amen. So we have to stand. And so he can go on about his business and never somebody else. And you let him know I ain't the one. Amen. Amen. And uh, after that, the angels came and ministered to him. You'll find that in other scriptures in the gospel. Then we come to our text today. You all, and there's a saying that familiarity breeds contempt, which means that when people are around you so much, they think they know you. They think they know you. And, and, and so they, they think that because they spent time around you and you grew up with them and you developed a friendship with them, they think that they really know you. But the scripture even says that uh, the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Only the Lord really knows who you are. You don't even know who you are. Amen, amen. Anybody ever say stuff that you say you wouldn't do? Right. And then you find out that you did? You didn't know yourself. You didn't know what you were capable of. Amen. But then again, only God truly knows us. The Bible says man looks on the outer appearance, God looks on the heart. So God himself shows up in a physical body in Jesus. And he went through the same growing up process that we went through, having to be changed, having to be fed, needing milk, depending on somebody else to take care of him and rear him up, but yet he was God in flesh. Because to be a faithful high priest, he had to be in touch with all the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. And, and so uh, the same one that they played with, they didn't know they were playing with God. The same one that they got mad at, they didn't know that they would get mad at God. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and the same one that they said with their friend right. with God. Would it be nice to have God as your friend? Yeah. Amen. 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 He don't never lead you into no trouble. Right. You don't never hear him cuss. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They throw no rock at nobody. Whether and what's not a lie, say he ain't do it. Are y'all with me? Amen. Amen. So he grew up, y'all, in Nazareth. Nazareth was like a, a Gentile outpost for the Roman army. It was a small little place. And this is where Jesus grew up. The Bible even said that he should be called the Nazarene. And um, so when, when uh, a young Jewish man came to the age of 30, 25 or 30, he was launched into the purpose that God had for him. And then Jesus, after he was baptized in Jordan, had to go through temptation in the wilderness, testing. Because when, when God said, you belong to me, when he says, you are my beloved, when, he, when you hear that, know that you will have to go through the tight testing process to prove that you really hear. 
And the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Amen. So if you say you believe in Christ, get ready. Y'all just got quiet on that because uh, when you say, when he say you belong to me, the devil will say, are they really yours? Right. Right. Uh-huh. That's what some of y'all try to hide. You belong to Jesus on Sunday. But when you get around other folks, you try to pretend like you don't know Jesus. Until you get in trouble, they don't want to call on Jesus. It don't work that way. Uh-uh. It's 24-7 every day, all day for the rest of your life, even into everlasting life. You belong to him. If you can, you confess that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, ask him to come into you. You belong to him. So Jesus goes back after dealing with the devil. And the devil is gone for a season. But it's one thing to deal with the devil, and now you have to deal with the devil's fault. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, had a little, little battle with, with devils and demons, and then, you know, God lets you overcome by his grace, and then you say, I'm glad that over with. And then the next day you have to deal with some other ones. Uh-huh, that, that in a little earth suit. Uh -huh. And so the Bible says that Jesus returned, which means that that's where he came from. Now he's going back. Now, uh, in the title, I, I want, want to give you this. Don't reject whom the Father has sent to you. Because it may not come in the package that you think. Mm -hmm. Have you ever ate something that didn't look good but when you taste it it's good it didn't look good but it's it good right here yeah yeah I didn't like broccoli when I was younger but now that I'm a little older and I understand the benefits I like broccoli I definitely did not like cauliflower when I was growing up because it looked weak but now that I'm older and understand the benefits that I get from broccoli and cauliflower, I can get past the presentation to get what's on the inside. Oh, y'all ain't with me. They're supposed to looking at you and they're looking at the presentation, but they don't understand the value that you can bring to them because of the God that's in you. Jesus returning in the power of the Holy Spirit. See, it's one thing when you leave and you're leaving in self. Even though he was God in the flesh, yet he had to suspend his divine right to act as God. So he was just operating as God in a natural body, waiting on the power of the Holy Spirit to be endued within him, to be filled without measure. So when he came back, he was not operating the same way that he left. Even though he was God and he was holy and he was without sin, but now he said, now I can move me. Now I can really demonstrate the God in me. Oh, uh, I gotta tell you, some of y'all been places, places where you grew up, places where you've been raised, and when God take you back, you're not gonna be the person that you were when you left. Uh -huh. And it's gonna be difficult for some folks to deal with you when you're not like you used to be. Those here in the Bible says that uh, he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, that power is miraculous power. Now, I don't know about y'all, but if I was going through something and was coming to fellowship, I want the person who can read the scripture to have some power. I want him to have miraculous power. Amen. I'm trying to get his attention. Me. Or get what look like. Right here. Scan. Examine me by the Holy Ghost. Do a Holy Ghost CT scan. A Holy Ghost MRI scan. Give me a quick sight test. Let's make sure my mind is right. Y'all ain't with me. You want to make sure that that man is operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. So if he sees something that ain't right, he can speak and deal with it. All right, y'all. Bible says that his fame went out throughout the region. 
So he left home, but yet he got back to where he was at. That, that Jesus was now speaking on a level that they yet had not heard. And you know when God start working through you and doing things, the very folks that you were raised up with, came up with, were wondering like, is that really going on? Did God really save them? Did God really call them? Did God really give them on that level? We want to see for ourselves. I'm like, you know the news go out about you, how God has touched and changed your life. Folks want to see if it's real or not. And then when God he get ready, he'll send you back. Uh-huh. And he goes back. And the Bible said that uh, he, he taught in that synagogues being glorified at all. Meaning that when people heard him teach, they gave him glory and honor and reverence and respect. And they, their view and opinion of him uh, increased to the point that he was no longer in their eyes the son of Joseph out of Nazareth. Because the Bible says that folks thought so little of Nazareth, they said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? What God likes to do is God likes to uh, raise up things in places that people despise or look over. He likes to hide you in me until we're in a place that the Spirit can show up in us and through us. Y'all gonna get to the real things. Let me hurry up. Then he came to Nazareth where he'd been brought up. And his custom. Custom. Say custom. custom. Uh-huh. So custom is what you have been prescribed and taught to do by those who are your parents and your elders. So his custom was sadly. I go to fellowship. I'm going to say it again. From sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday, that's when I devote time to the Lord. What is your custom? What are patterns are you setting for yourself and your children and your death grandchildren? When I was coming up, it was known Sunday, church. Wednesday, Bible study. Sunday, Ain't not open. Uh -huh. Now the liver store open everything. Oh. <laughs> Even the shoe mark will shut down. Y'all don't talk to me. <laughs> now the devil got it turned up all the way. Why? What are the customs now? Uh huh. We, yeah, I have set a custom in here. Y'all with me? Uh, because if I don't set the custom, because you know what's going to happen to young folks? They're going to tweet, hey, you going to come to church, leave your phone. Pastor going to call you out. If you ain't looking at the Bible on your phone, you better not pray. Why? Because we're saying what? Custom. Letting them know that when you come to those doors, your mind and your heart has to be on the Lord. Are y'all with me? So what if we teach it if we're not giving them customs that gonna give glory to our God and that they focus on God so they when they're not in your presence, God is in their heart. When folks want them to do something, they go, oh no, no. They're gonna be hard convincing them. And even if they do it, they ain't gonna feel like it. When you set customs. All right, God. He said that he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, stood up to read. I know Mary and Joseph had to be proud. It doesn't tell us at this time if Joseph was still alive. We know Mary and his brothers and sisters were still alive, but ain't it nice when you see your children doing what they were purposed to do? Uh, it, it gives my mother joy, no doubt, and my, my family joy when they see me doing what God sent me on the earth to do. To glorify him by preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that people will be saved by, by recognizing who Christ is, what he was sent to do, how he was sent to redeem them. Ain't it a joy when you're able to see the work that you put in and your children and your grandchildren, you see it manifesting before your eyes. But if you do not going to put in no work, if we don't set the customs, then guess what? 
we're going to be looking at them and we're going to oh, have mercy. What have I birthed? It ain't the problem what your birth is. What did you prune and set in order with your birth? Ain't nothing wrong with a nice little spanking every now and then, y'all. The Bible says foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but a rod of correction will draw it far from him, y'all. Set some customs. You don't do that. Y'all got me? Amen. Everybody I went when I was growing up, there was a switch. On the refrigerator, there was a switch. Are y'all with me right on the counter to remind you if you get out of line, you'll feel a little steam like a thousand bees at you. Y'all got me certain customs. Go to church, they come to church with a switch. Wait a minute, I thought we were in the house of the Lord. They brought to beat me like they beat Jesus. And what they're saying is get out of line and see what happened to you. Talk too much, they see what happened to you. What be no giggling in the pews? If they didn't get you the ushers, get you the evil eye. Well, are y'all with me? One of the women in all white standing like they were six, seven with all them high heels on was standing beside you till you shut up. Y'all ain't with me. Set the order in the house. Some of y'all still stand there from your childhood. You looking like they ain't had no training. They didn't go to the church I went to. Amen. Some of y'all remember those voices right now. Amen. Even in your old age, if you say it, do something you shouldn't do in church, you hear the old mother's voice. Are y'all hearing me? You talk. You talk. Yeah, he went on the Sabbath day. They were little to him. Unto him, the book of the prophet Isaiah. Look here. If he don't stand up, he needs a word. I don't know how people can stand up, but have no scriptures before them. Unless they have the word hidden in their heart that they can regurgitate it back out. Now, they brought the book, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, every day in Jewish culture and scriptures, they have a scripture for each day. This particular day, the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. Starting at verse 1, Jesus found himself in the book. I'm going to say it again. Jesus found himself in the book. The verse that was talking about him. Have you and I found ourselves in the book, in the verses that are speaking about us and the purpose that we have on the earth? If you don't find yourself and I don't find myself in the scriptures, what was meant to speak to us and our purpose, you'll have other people telling you what you should do, what your purpose to do, but you don't know what the word says you're supposed to do. And then you're frustrated and unfulfilled in your life because you haven't found yourself in the book. When you find yourself in the book, you know your parameters, you know what you're sent to do, you know what you're empowered to do. You know that when I do this, can't nobody stop me because they can't stop the word of God because he watched over his word to perform it. I am empowered by the word. So Jesus said, this me, this where I am. Even before I received the Lord Jesus as Savior, I used to read the Bible. It fascinated me. And I could quote scripture. Could not quote scripture. Yeah. First time we sat down, he, she tried to tell me a scripture. She told me one scripture. I just kept going, kept flowing. Unsaved, just flowing with scripture. <laughs> Listen to me. Uh huh. Unsaved. She said a scripture. And then I'm rallying out the, about going through the whole chapter. They're good, bro. I hope y'all caught what I just said. But just because you quote scripture don't mean you are in a relationship with the living God through Christ. I'm, I'm rallying out scriptures like I'm faithful every Sunday, every Wednesday, at prayer service. But I'm on the way to hell in a 12 speed. Sound like I'm in relationship with God, but not in relationship with God. What I'm trying to say is don't be fooled. Even the devil knows 
inscribed and for our edification and example. Yes. Y'all with me? This is not all God has said. This is not all he said. Everything in here is not all that Jesus has done. He said if, if, if everything was written and he done, wouldn't be enough books in the world in the world to contain all the deeds that he's done. This ain't it. This ain't all. This is foundational. All right. The Bible says Spirit of the Lord is now he's saying, look at it. Now, some folks think he just quote scripture, read scripture. They don't understand that he telling them who is on him and in him. Right. See, the problem is you all, people used to people quote scripture, but don't realize I'm living scripture. I am now a living epistle read of all men. I'm going to say it again. We can't just be quoted but are we living epistles read of all men? He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For read, because he hath anointed me. He has smeared me. Uh, anointing means to smear or consecrate with all to be set apart. Means that you are now set apart for God's use. He has anointed me and you are anointed to do something. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. Uh-huh. So if you're not set aside to preach or proclaim the good news, the good message of Jesus Christ, I, you can't be, I feel like it. I think. Are you anointed? Uh, has he consecrated you and set you apart? If you are not, have been not set apart for the gospel, like Paul said, I've been set apart for this. Amen. If you ain't been set apart for this, leave it alone. This ain't for you. Because uh, you will find yourself with some spiritual enemies who want to take you out. And if you ain't anointed, yes, and now I want you to know that fallen angels are anointed also. But the difference is you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, Great is he that is in me than he that's what? In the world. So Jesus said, I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. To those you all who recognize that spiritually they thank for. <laughs> See, people who already think that they are righteous in themselves won't receive gospel message. It's only those who realize, Lord, if you don't save me, Lord, if you don't cleanse me and forgive me, Lord, if you don't keep me, I won't be killed. If you don't save me, I won't be saved. If you don't cleanse me by the blood of Jesus, I'm going to be dirty in your sight, and I will not be able to stay in your presence. So I need you. Those are the people whom the Lord wants to make rich. And those who think they're rich are poor. He says he sent me to heal the broken heart. He said, you know what? I'm sent to broken people. I'm sent, you know what? Can I be real with y'all? Pastors who don't understand who they are don't like dealing with broken people. Can I be real with y'all? Most of them just praying for folks 
who are got everything together. Delusion. All of us have brokenness in areas that we need the Lord to heal us. So if you think you will have a, a perfect church without Christ prevailing, you're fooling yourself. God said, you know what? When I sent you, this is what I sent you for. When I anointed you, this is what I anointed you for. Because I'm nigh to the broken in heart and I bind up their wounds. And how I bind up their wounds is I call men and women to serve me and through them, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we minister to the broken so that they can become whole. And I am the one who makes whole. So if you don't want to do that, I don't really think you're called to the ministry. How you deal with them, you can't deal with them in you. It is God working in us and through us to do his good will and pleasure. But you to say, I can't have it. You're right. You can't, but he can. I don't want to do this no more. This ain't about if you want to do it. When you're called, you know that you, this is this what you've been purposed to do. When most people realize the reality of ministry, they run unless they really call. Right. You want to talk about it. Right. It's amazing when, when we have ministers come out, they call. Okay, we don't see them. Oh, you see that one right there? That one right there gonna make me grow happy. You see that one right there? You see that little black, all oh, nice big stuff hat you got? It's gonna start getting great streets in. You're going to have to start coloring it. Pass up. Pass up. Yeah. Pastor, how do you do this? It takes God through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. That's how I'm called to this. If you ain't called to this and you ain't anointed for this, sit down somewhere. Because you're going to cause chaos. And you're going to even make the brokenness more broken. Uh huh. Jesus said, I, I, "This is what I'm sent for." Uh huh. And preach deliverance to the captive. Those who the enemy has bound them, blinded, they can't move because the enemy has them captured in mind, spirit, and body. He has them captured, but I'm sent to set them free. I'm gonna say it again. She said, "I'm sent." To set the captives free. But if you call, you can't free nobody else. Are y'all with me? If you call, you can't free nobody else. You know what I found out from the Lord? He said, There's stuff that you can't deal with until I deal with this. And when I deal with this, then you can go. Y'all ain't with me. See, there's some people who want to get stuff to you. He says, when you free. Now, if you're in jail and you want somebody to put something on your books, but if they in there with you, who's going to put something on the books for you when they in there with you? Hey, look, put me something on the books. I'm in here with you. I'm in here with you.
who will help you stay by. You right they don't want you to be free. You know what I found out? Folks who bound don't want you to get out. Because misery love company. You talk good. Look at, I ain't going to stay in there with you. If I'm delivered, then you know what? I'll put some on your books. I see your scripture. Uh, not, that's what I mean by putting some on the books. I'm going to send scripture. I don't plan on going to the Lord. On lockdown. Send your scripture. I see your scripture. One of my friends said, T, you want to roll with me? I didn't roll with you today. Uh-uh, the Lord will to free me. I ain't, nope, I ain't going. I won't, I won't go back to the way it used to be. Y'all ain't with me. Some of y'all want to be. Y'all want pastor to put stuff on your books. Uh-huh, this is the book I'm putting on. This is the book. I'm going to put scriptures from the book. I'm going to go for it. Uh-huh. Recovering a sight to the blind. You can't recover something unless it's been lost. You all, the original spiritual perception that you and I had when God sent us into this physical body is the sight that is lost once you were born into this world and you are born into sin. You are spiritually blind. Amen. Jesus has come to recover your spiritual sight so that you can perceive and see and have visions and dreams of what the Father sent you into the earth to do. That's why you all, there are things in you that you have been instructed to do before the foundation of the world when you were in God. When he created spiritual beings, we are the last of the creation of God. We are the youngest of the creation of God. As far as being on the earth. And when your sight is recovered. You come into purpose. Because now you can see. One of the most frustrating things is to not know what you were sent here to do. That's one of the dilemmas for people who aren't even in college. Taking classes, but it does not even agree with your spirit. And you're like, why am I wasting time in here? It just don't agree with my spirit. I don't know when I was at UJ taking classes and, you know, accounting and business and all that. I'm like, you know, I, I love numbers and figuring things out. I, I know I should, probably should have been a doctor in the natural because he give me medical stuff all the time, but this don't agree. I came to a frustration point. And God was reminding me when I was yet the first thought a dream I had that God was showing me something that was going to happen before it happened. And I told my grandmother, he reminded me of that. You remember when you were on the sofa with your grandmother? The first dream that you remember that I gave you that was going to come to pass the next day you told your grandmother. This is what I'm calling you for. And I was like, Stop staying up all night trying to fight against what I sent you in the earth for. Slept one night a week. Some of y'all ain't sleeping. You're outside of purpose. When you get in purpose, you sleep. Until you wake you up to pray. Talk about it. Are y'all with me? I know you're frustrated. Amen. 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 And then you're frustrated with people who are trying to tell you what you should be doing when they don't know purpose. And I remember when God called me and he said, now, how I'm going to do you, I'm not going to do you the way that I may do someone else. This is your own special assignment for me. So don't let nobody get in your ear trying to tell you you make a mistake and all of that. Thank your God. They didn't send you to the earth. I did. 
I'm going to take care of you. I will provide for you. I will protect you. I will heal you. I will deliver you. Not them. When you get in trouble, they're not going to be able to help you like I can help you. Your, your assignment is to obey God. Uh-huh. Somebody need to hear that. The folks that are bruised, I'm going to sell that living. If you bruise, he said, oh, that, these circumstances and situations and folks ain't going to keep beating on you. I'm going to deliver you from being bruised. You know what? Areas that a bruise hurt more because they are more tender to the touch. When you're bruised in the air, somebody can just bump up and you. Right. He said, I want to deliver you from having to always be so sensitive yes. to touch. Um, you will always feel offended. You won't always feel rejected. You won't always feel, because I am going to liberate you. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So there are folks standing up with no Holy Spirit working through them and in them. Can't liberate nobody. Can't recover no spiritual, recover no spiritual sight. Can't preach legally. Because they're not anointed to do it. And you wonder why everything saves the sun. <laughs> yeah, the Bible says you need to be closable. He said, I don't have to say nothing else. I already done told y'all who I am, what I came to do. And you know how it is when, when folks have measured you, but your measurement is beyond their measurement, but they want to keep you in the box. Oh, if you have not found out the frustration of being in folks' little box. How many of y'all folks got y'all in the box? They think they know who you are just because of a little bit. They see you are now even some of your failures and struggles that you have. They got you in the box, but they don't know you yet. God sent me here to be outside the box. And just because no, no stick of measurement, no, no ruler, don't go this far. Don't look measuring tape. Guess what? It, it don't extend this far because what he do in me and through me, he does far above, above all that I can ask or think or imagine. So you're no ruler, you're no measuring tape. Don't stretch out at all. Yeah. Always have folks trying to measure me. You should do this. You should preach this way. You should do that. And you can't do that. And oh, if you do it that way, you are with me. But you ain't delivering nobody. You ain't using the name of Jesus to cast out nothing. You ain't nowhere calling people to assemble together in the name of Jesus that we can pray for our government and our country and our children and for God to have mercy. What are, what are you doing? But you got your measuring stick out. Talk about it. And every time they sit on a measurement, I say, Lord, do something great. I mean, just do something that sounds stupendous. <laughs> Let this in the street just stupid. God do a stupid, crazy Do a deliverance just, just, just crazy. Lord, that let me fan somebody with one of the little church fans and they just fall out of the dark. He said, just blow on me. He said, blow on me. He said, I'm blowing on the elevator. The brother like, pop, they fall out. And the spirit of the Lord come upon them. Y'all ain't with me? Why? They are not my measurement. God determines. 
He called, not them. Not mama, not daddy, not kid folk. God called me. God filled me. So what, what y'all say, anybody else say, does not matter. In the end, you're not going to be the one that say, well, done my good to pay for sin. You're going to have to stand in line, wait on your turn, for him to examine you. That's why I don't care. That's why I have such a good time preaching. Why? Because I know ain't nothing y'all can do. It ain't nothing I can do about what God has you to do. Because he sent you, talk to you, feel you for your assignment. The best thing I can do is celebrate, praise God for what he's doing in you and through you for his glory so we can get on the same team in unity and bust up the devil's plan. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? Go to the book. Gave it to the minister. Here you go. I don't know how you're going to follow that up right there. Amen. Hey Will that be one? That's all you're going to be able to say. Uh huh. He gave it again to the minister. He gave the book again to the minister. The person who was serving to take the scroll, roll it back up, and put it in place. See, there's some folks, they say they call the minister, but just taking the book, closing it up, putting it back in place is beneath them. When when I when I was at previous fellowship with my pastor, when he finished, I was the first one up to grab the Bible, the book, get a little case, and he finished greeting folks. I, I stood faithfully and waited till he finished. Much as I love cheap, I stayed there until he finished shaking every person's hand, no matter how long it took. Why? I understood that I am a servant first. And he don't need this on his shoulder when he's trying to hug, greet, and encourage people. Are y'all hearing me? And if you're faithful over a few things, he'll make your ruler over me. And now folks trying to skip process. Don't want to serve, but they want to be over. Uh, talking good. Start in the place of service and ministry to someone who's at a greater capacity than you are. And then if you serve them, you can have access to what's in them. Right. Can you imagine serving Jesus just saying, what a word, Lord? <laughs> he has the spirit without measure. Yes, and if you can receive him, you can tap into what's in him. Yeah. He can impart to you. You can become a disciple. Yeah. Right. I can share in what you just said. All I have to do is serve you and be your disciple. Y'all ain't with me? See, there are folks who want stuff, but they don't want to be a disciple. They don't want to learn. No, you're trying to be greater than me. And you may indeed have uh, the capacity for a greater metro, but you don't skip grade. And as you prove it, you can handle this grade. Good. Okay, you move on. All folks had the eyes on They were fasting. Because there's a difference when you speak in the spirit of the Lord. It's upon the words that you're speaking. Because when the words go out, they don't go out empty. The words go out with the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your voice echoing to people. And you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit on the words. That's why when a true man of God preaches in the power of the Holy Spirit, your spirit is energized. Why? Because you're being empowered by the word of God with the Holy Spirit moving upon the word. That's why folks are trying to preach with no anointing. Look. Again. Then he began to say, now this really going to make some old man. When they measured you out, 
and they religious and they just come to do they they Saturday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday religious duty. Is it come? I, I went to church. I went to sleep. I thought you were in church. I thought you always steady to show yourself the truth of God looking that he did not be ashamed right to the bottom of the word of truth. He said, this thing, the scripture is fulfilled in your ear. Drop the window microphone. You know what, you know what he's saying? What I just read, I am. What I just told you, I am the one. Oh, Y'all got kids in there. What if your little child reads scripture, be grown, your cousin, your family, somebody you grew up with, read the scripture, and then tell you it's just been fulfilled in your ears. Now, I, not you. <laughs> not you. You stole my body. Uh -huh. <laughs> you the one got mad and cut my tie. Uh -huh. And thought that nobody knew about it. Okay. <laughs> so, you talking about now God using me. Go quiet, man. <laughs> But look, all bear him witness. All bear him witness. All bear him witness testimony and wonder at the great, look at gracious words that were preceded out of his mouth. They said, now look, they bear witness and wonder at the gracious words. Now, there's a contradiction. What he's saying sounds so powerful, but yet, they chose the song. Did that build my table? My swimming. Oh, yeah, he put me in the window. Yeah, he fixed my roof for the storm cap. Yeah, when he didn't want to help with Joseph, help him. Didn't he tell him, Jesus, go up there and nail that in right there. I'm going to do this over here. Oh, that Joseph boy. See, that's a contradiction. They've been moved in their soul, but yet their memory is so natural minded. In the natural man, Receive not the things of God because they are foolishness unto him, because they are spiritually discerned. So they can't reconcile their natural mind with what their ears have heard. That has invaded their soul and their spirit. They've been stirred in their spirit in their soul, but their natural mind say, uh-uh. Don't think beyond this. They just chose a point. Don't believe it. That's it. That's the contradiction of hearing the word and the word taking the root and faith being developed by what you heard. Folks get natural mind. Natural mind will keep you broke, frustrated, hurt, bound up in pain and captivity. Natural mind. He, he said, he said, look, y'all, y'all gonna say, is this you hear yourself? What you heard done in the purple, mm -hmm. do it in your own country. I'm going to say that again. I like that. that, that. What we heard about you, do it here. Y'all be amazed. I go places, folks try to, they take my hand and put it on yeah. uh, What you think going to happen? Yeah. I know that. You think you're going to take my hand and put it on you? <laughs> you think the woman with the issue of blood going to snuck up on Jesus and touch the hem of his garment and virtue was just poured out? The difference between you and her, she believed. You think this is a magic trick. You don't believe? Because if you really believe, when you walk by me, you would give me what it is. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, cousin. I know who dwells in me. It ain't me, it's the God who dwells in me, who doeth the work. So if you can't hear me, you can't help but experience the God that's 
in me if you believe that God is in me. You just do a magic trick because what you heard, what happened down here. But you really don't believe it because if you did, you would already been down. That's true. I'm going to be good at this moment. Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. At home, I still had the white vision. Yep. Take out the trap. <laughs> mop the floor. Yep. You know, you left your shoes right there. Who do you think you're talking to the prophet like that? If you clean up behind the prophet. Oh, you know you left them in the bitches in the sink last night. Hello. Familiarity breeds contempt. Yeah. See, they're supposed to know you naturally, and they like, I, you, you be Holy Ghost still, but you need the Holy Ghost wife. <laughs> you need him to bring back to remembrance that the sink needs to be clean. Y'all know what I'm talking to. I hear you, Pastor. <laughs> All the women say, Hallelujah. You own it, Pastor. You're a preacher strong. Amen. Amen. My brother need to be here this morning. You show right. It's hard, you all. It's hard accepting what God is doing some with someone when you have known them naturally right. all your life. That's just human nature. And that's why it's so easier to do things of God in places that are different than where you grew up. It's even easier dealing with people that you don't know than the people that you've grown up with. It's harder to convince them that what you're doing is sincere and is of God. That's why God often y'all shifts us to other places. When he's going to do something great and normal, he will send you to someone another place. Why? Because there are people who will not receive the God in you and through you. Uh huh. He said, Look, I tell you the truth. He said, Look here, there were a lot of widows in Israel in covenant. Mm -hmm. In covenant with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. In Israel. Then I am sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Right. But he said, uh, when the family came, uh -huh, he sent his prophet to another land. Amen. But there were widows in that land. But he sent his prophet somewhere else. Uh -huh. and, and then when there was a family, mm -hmm. she ain't real good. <laughs> the all didn't waste and the flower did not waste. It kept what Jesus is trying to tell me is like you better recognize what you got why you got it. Because he can very easily shift it somewhere else. And when a family hit, the word of the Lord is in the prophet's mouth and whatever he speak over, God will then agree with it and it keep flowing. I'm going to say it again so y'all catch it. You better receive what God has said because if you don't, what will happen is he'll send it to somebody right. who can appreciate it and eat from the words that are spoken from the prophet's mouth because they're God's word. And then you'll be hungry and he'll be right in enemy territory eating good things. Good chicken. Anointed, deep fried chicken. With a widow who has no one to help her. All right, y'all. Right. Mm -hmm. He said there was a lot of lepers in Israel at the time of Elijah the prophet. He said none of them were clean. No, no. All of these folks are covenant people. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? They had access to covenant, but guess what? Other folks are enjoying what they should enjoy. How would you like you have access but want access? Because you can't receive. There was a little servant girl 
who was in the place where Nana was captain of, of, of the king's host. And she said, you know, he, he was loving and, and, and building certain girls. So all that he were with the prophet. He could deal with this. Men were packed up all his stuff. So I'm going just based on your word. Because you said that this man would do this, don't believe it. Y'all know what really frustrates me? Folk come outside of here and have not even yet covenant with this local fellowship. They get the marriage of folks sitting here and missing. And you have access to it on a weekly basis. Ain't no way in the wood. Are y'all hear me? No way in the wood. Not wood, but wood. I would let nobody get access to my pastor before me. But if I have a need spiritually and I know that God gives it to him or any other minister in this fellowship, I'm going to make sure that I get first before anybody get a taste, a touch of Jesus before I do through them. Oh, I'm going to get it first. But y'all don't realize some of these ministers, when God operates down here, y'all, if y'all don't want it, I get it. I do. Y'all can think of more what y'all want, but I know what's up. And I get it. I just be like, I said, y'all don't even know. They ain't got no clue. They still looking on the outside. They still listen to what they heard years ago or who they used to be and what they do used to be. I don't care what they did. Because far as I'm concerned, it's under the blood anyway. I know the person right now that has been redeemed and filled with the Holy Spirit. Give me what God put in you, what you did last year, yesterday. I don't care as long as you. Y'all ain't got me. As long as you repent and you got a relationship. Look here. Some of y'all stay sick. Both got healing hands. God has gifted them with the gift of healing. You stay. <coughs> they looking at you like, really? All I got to do is lay your hands on you and God gonna touch you. I don't know why I keep feeling this way. Your medicine is right in them hands. Right there. Talk about it. I don't know what to do. Some of these folks, God has given them with a word of wisdom. You talk to them, they give you instructions what to do. It's God that wisdom you do it and stuff work out. But to you, they look dumb. They sound loud and they crazy and all that. I'm like, they got the word of wisdom. What God do, he packaged it in a way to see if you're going to tap into the spirit of it instead of your natural mind. Talking good. Then look, look how folk change on <laughs> All the synagogue, when they heard these things, they were filled with wrath. Church folk, filled with wrath. Synagogue folk, filled with wrath. Look, look, Jesus filled with the Holy Spirit. They filled with wrath. Anger that just want to cut up. In the synagogue, in church. I'm going to say it again. Jesus filled with the Holy Spirit. They filled with wrath. How you going to be filled with wrath if you just heard an anointed word? Jesus. Jesus. Young folks going to come to fellowship and supposedly want the word of God. And y'all feel with that. But it's easy to be filled with wrath if you ain't filled with the word. And you're not filled with the Spirit of God. Because when you got the Word, the Word will change. The Word is like a warning light on your car. Amen. 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 You get in the car, you take off, and you got one new car. Amen. The little thing just keep getting louder. Beep. Beep. Little seat belt. Beep. 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 You're like, shut up. Look, put on your seat belt. <laughs> Because I don't want nobody to pull a rap up in my 
But just know you don't know it. You don't know it. Oh, I got some soldiers with me that you know what I see. You don't want it. Oh, no, baby. They walk in. And they strapped. And I'm not talking about a nine millimeter. No, I ain't kidding. And all what they come with will straighten you out spiritually. Get you back in order. Then if you really get too high, all stuff will go right for the rest of the week. Till you repent. You know, and I don't need more than for you. I want you to be blessed and highly paid. Look here. Look here. They were in wrath. The Bible says the wrath of man does not fulfill the will of God. I guess they just overlook that scripture and probably right there. Uh -huh. Go to church but don't know enough word to hold yourself in check. Or to just say, Lord, you know what? I'm mad and you know what? But help me. You don't see nobody praying, do you? It ain't amazing. They speak. They just what they religious, but not spiritual. When you spiritual, when 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 you get in the play, God start talking to you. Come on, anybody ever been real mad, and then the Holy Spirit give you others, calm your spirit down. Yes, Lord, I know I can't do that. I can't think that way. I gotta think differently. Yeah, yeah, Lord, I know I'm not supposed to do it that way. Now that I know you, give me, Lord, help me. Lord. I know a blessing. That's what they know not what they do. Yeah. Anybody ever talk to you, talk to yourself like that? Uh -huh. See, but when, when there is no true relationship, there is no restraint. Uh -huh. They rose up. Look here. Who is going to be foolish enough to try to fight their own Savior? They own the team. They own God. You got to be crazy to want to sit. He told you, I'm here to, to, to recover your sight, to heal your broken heartness, to get you out of bondage, and you get rid of the very person that can help you. There are folks whom God has sent them some people to help them, to deliver them, and guess what? They got rid of the help.
God will give you the grace, the supernatural ability to what is opposing you, trying to push you out of purpose. You actually return back around and walk through them. And if they keep trying to push you while you're supernaturally able to walk through them, they're going to fall over. What they're trying to throw you over, they're going to fall over trying to get rid of you. They're going to fall over trying to get rid of you. Because if you're trying to press against what is there, not there anymore, laws of gravity say you're going to fall. That's it, bro. We'll see you. Uh huh. Uh huh. He said, "Look here. Let me go ahead and give you a little headquarters. <laughs> Y'all could have been home base. <clears throat> Y'all could have been home base. So much, so much money could have been coming in because the ministry would have been built up." If, if I was here, so many people in this city who were sick could be healed, delivered, even those who were impressing you were came to our God when they heard the word of God, because there were centurions that later on came to the Lord, believed in the Lord. I uh, guess what? And you could be out of lockdown. Your city could be out of captivity if you really wanted me, says Jesus. But since you don't want me, guess what? Then now you're going to stay in captivity. You're going to stay blind to the purpose of this city because when people are in the city, the city has a purpose. Yeah. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? There are cities that God assigns a purpose for that city because you and I are in that city. Yeah. Works right. of the enemy that should be destroyed when you are there, the anointing of the Holy Spirit starts to unfold the purpose of God and what the enemy could do, he can't do, because you and I are there. Do you hear anything else about management out here? <laughs> Drop off the map. Other than folks going to Israel or going to visit today. That's it. I would not want my city that I grew up in. To not fulfill the purpose that God has for me. To be a city of refuge. A city of hope. A place of prayer. A place where the kingdom of God is manifested. I would not want that. The very city that I live in now. People are being killed all the time. The enemy has made his mark by putting a rainbow on the downtown area of, in the midst of the town of Gannett that led us who, who got eyes to see that guess what, that spirit that is now uh, ruling over the country and over the thoughts of people is now I put my signature right on the street so that when you walk on the street you're saying that I'm telling you, I own this city square. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. And no one is rising up and telling the man if y'all don't get rid of that, God will deal with you. I'm telling you right now, if you don't get rid of that, God will deal with you. And since you are a legal authority to, to actually enforce it, God will deal with you. Hello. See, men of God have to stand up with power and truth. All right, y'all. Hold on. Jesus said, guess what? I'm still going to teach on the Sabbath. I'm still going to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy because my father <clears throat> instituted the Sabbath, the day of rest. I'm still going to preach and teach on the Sabbath in every other day. And they were astonished of his doctrine, for his word was with power. His teaching was so profound, and his words with so much power that they were stunned. They were stunned. If you and I do not receive what God, whom he has sent, the Son of God and the Spirit of God, we will forsake, be delivered, having our spiritual sight, even natural sight restored. 
do the same with others. It's all about what you receive, not with your natural mind, but with what you heard by faith. The word has to be mixed with God. Y'all stand. If you're here today and you've heard the account about Jesus, what he proclaimed that he has come to do for us, you all. Jesus said that in another scripture given that was Zacchaeus, he said, I have come to seek and save that which was lost. God did. The Father sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. The scriptures teach that God committed his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says that we've been bought with a price through the blood of Jesus. The Father has redeemed and purchased us and cleansed us from all sins, all iniquities, all transgressions. When you and I have to confess that, Lord, I know I have sinned and fallen short of your grace, but I believe in your Son, Jesus, who you sent to be a propitiation for the sins that I have committed against you and fallen short of your glory. Father, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, my Redeemer. I know apart from Him, I can't be good enough. I can't do enough good. But I believe in Him, in His resurrection, His sacrificial death on the cross to make the price for my sins, His holy life that was lived without sin. I believe in that. Despite what I hear in the world, despite what I hear people say, I believe in Jesus the Christ. I believe that he was resurrected on the third day and he's now ascended to the right hand of the Father when he ever lived to make intercession for us and he's coming back soon. If you believe that in your heart and confess that with your mouth, the Bible says that you shall be saved. If you're here today and the Spirit of the Lord is leading you to this local fellowship to covenant with this fellowship of believers, only as you're led by the Holy Spirit, I ask that you come. You may be seated. We're about.